Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. It's a nice day outside, so I thought I'd do the rundown out here. This one's going out to our buddy Vaz Vegas, who couldn't watch us live yesterday with EP Live, but ended up watching the whole thing and said it was excellent. Thank you so much, Vaz Vegas. This rundown is all yours. Western gamers on the Nintendo Switch won't be left out of the Monster Hunter franchise. Capcom has announced something most of us hoped was coming. The new Switch version of Monster Hunter Generations is getting an official release in North America. It's called Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate and will arrive August 28th, just three days after it hits Japan. Capcom first announced last year that they were bringing the game to the Switch in Japan, but they hadn't confirmed a Western release until now, so fans will be happy that they won't have to wait any extra time. Monster Hunter Generations was first released on the 3DS back in 2015, and the new Switch version offers better graphics, new quests, and an optional g rank difficulty mode for hardcore players. You'll also be able to transfer your save data from the 3DS version so you won't lose your progress. This comes as the new PS4 and Xbox One game, Monster Hunter World, has become a huge success for Capcom, raking in the dough and becoming their fastest-selling title ever. That means you can expect to see more Monster Hunter games on consoles in the near future. 20th Century Fox has something coming, and we're not talking about Disney or Comcast. The first trailer for the new Predator movie has hit Earth. The film trades in the South American jungles of the original film for the temperate rainforests of the greater Vancouver area, with a deadly Predator aliens taking on mercenaries in good old-fashioned suburbia. The plot revolves around the Predators going to different planets in order to splice their DNA with various alien creatures in a bid to become stronger, which means we'll be seeing new hybrid variations of the creatures. I think they're attempting hybridization. The film itself also appears to be a hybrid between traditional sci-fi action and comedy, with several laughs in the trailer, teasing the tone of the film. He saw something. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's written and directed by Shane Black, who delivered action comedies like Iron Man 3, The Nice Guys, and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. He also appeared in front of the camera as an actor in the original Predator movie. You said, me too! Mine's as big as a house! Just because the new film will have comedy doesn't mean it will skimp on the action, though. Like other recent Fox outings like Deadpool and Logan, the new Predator will have an R rating. This is the first Predator film in more than eight years, so Fox is hoping that it will revive the franchise just in time for it to be bought by Disney or Comcast. It hits theaters this September. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is getting another veteran actor in one of its latest films. Annette Bening has been cast in the new superhero adventure Captain Marvel. There's no official word yet on who she might play, but there are several conflicting reports on the matter. Variety claims that Bening will play some kind of scientist, while The Hollywood Reporter says that she'll be playing Marie Danvers, the mother of Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers. In the comics, Marie Danvers isn't a scientist, but that doesn't mean she can't be reinvented in the film. Captain Marvel herself will be played by Oscar winner Brie Larson, and the rest of the cast includes Jude Law as her alien mentor Marvel, Guardians of the Galaxy villains Lee Pace and Juman Hansu and Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury. The film takes place in the early 1990s and will hit theaters next March. Captain Marvel will also appear in the fourth Avengers movie, due out a few months later in May. This next story features spoilers from The Last Jedi. It looks like we haven't seen the last of Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. Mark Hamill has apparently hinted that he'll reprise his iconic role in the next Star Wars movie, Episode 9. Writing on Twitter, Hamill has posted this panel from the recent Last Jedi comic adaptation, which shows Luke just before his death at the end of the film, saying his final line, See you around, kid. See you around. Hamill adds the word foreshadowing above the image, indicating that characters will indeed be seeing Luke around in the next film. It's not too hard to imagine how this is possible. We've already seen other Jedi Masters return as ghosts, and the slightly mysterious way that Luke died opens up even more possibilities for how he might return. The death of Luke Skywalker and how it was handled was one of the biggest complaints that The Last Jedi detractors had with the film, so Lucasfilm and Episode Nine director J.J. Abrams have a vested interest in giving the character more closure in the next film. Episode will begin filming this July and hit theaters in December 2019. It's a good time to be a retro gamer because two cool pieces of news have just come in. First up, publisher Devolver Digital and developer Mega Cat Studios have announced an all-new game for the Super Nintendo. You heard that right. They're releasing a new game called Fort Parker's Crunch Out, where players run and manage their own game development studio, and it's being released on real SNES cartridges that will actually run on the classic system. Mega Cat Studios has already released several games on the NES, but this will be their first SNES game. No word yet if it will also find its way to modern platforms. Next up, the other cool retro news today is that SNK has officially announced 
announced the Neo Geo Mini, their long-rumored retro system. Like the NES Classic and SNES Classic, this is a tiny recreation of the original Neo Geo MVS arcade cabinet, first released in 1990, and comes preloaded with 40 classic games like Metal Slug and King of Fighters 97. The system is only 16 centimeters tall and has a 3.5-inch display, so it really is mini. The price and release date have yet to be announced. Nintendo's apparently found the Infinity Gauntlet because they want to make sure the Switch, like all things in the universe, is perfectly balanced. The gaming giant has announced a new Switch peripheral called the Adjustable Charging Stand, which allows users to balance their Switch in portable mode while it's charging. Right now, if you want to plug in the Switch when you're away from its TV dock, you have a troublesome USB cable sticking out the bottom, which makes it very difficult to balance on, say, an airplane tray table. This peripheral eliminates that problem. It will cost 25 bucks in Canada and is slated to hit stores soon. The new Super Smash Bros. isn't the only crossover fighting game coming to the Switch. The anime-style crossover fighting game Blade Strangers, first announced last year, is adding a few Western game icons to its roster. The game is getting three big characters from developer Nicholas Inc., Cave Story Heroes Quote and Curly Brace, and the naked crying baby Isaac from The Binding of Isaac. That's all they've announced for now, but Isaac designer Ed McMillan has created another iconic character, Super Meat Boy, so we've got our fingers crossed that he'll appear in the game as well. Blade Strangers is already set to include characters from big Japanese game franchises like Gunvolt and Code of Princess, so this will give Western gamers a new reason to check it out. It's slated to arrive later this year on the Switch, PlayStation 4, and PC. And that wraps us up for the rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with EP Live, so make sure you tune in and come back for that. In the meantime, click around and check out some of the other content we've gotten. If you dig it, hit subscribe, that little bell, and if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too.